Hi there, it's Nicole for Honeybee Stamps, and today I'm super excited to share a card with some of the new July release stamps and then some previously released dies. This release is all about mermaids and under the sea sort of images and just so many gorgeous stamps. Really, really fun, nice large images, lots to build scenes with, which you guys know I love. Um, so, so much fun. I'm gonna be creating a single panel here and then popping up a greeting from that. Actually die cutting this large thanks right from the colored and stamped background and then popping it up and not really losing any of the detail of the stamped design. It's really easy to do and it creates kind of a really stunning visual effect. What I like to do first is lay out my stamps and things, kind of get a really good idea of where, where everything's gonna go. I don't want the die cut to go through the face. That's the only thing. I think that will distort the face. So other than that, I wanna lay it all out, make sure that I have my spacing correct, add plenty of filler detail, and then I'm gonna stamp all these images on some Bristol Smooth cardstock to do some coloring with Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. So this is gonna be more of a watercolor look, but the Zigs blend beautifully on this Bristol Smooth cardstock. The main mermaid image here is from the Swimming By stamp set. I think this is about a four by four or three by four stamp set. It's a smaller stamp set. Um, it's one of the mermaid images. There's tons among all the stamp sets. And then I'm part of the greeting, the swimming by to say is from this. Then lots of the filler images are from the under the sea stamp set, which also has some additional mermaids. This one just worked really well for the technique I wanted to do. You could use any of them probably. I am going to go ahead and pick up all those images the Misty makes this fantastic for being able to stamp everything with one press. Other than just a little bit of the under, under the water seaweed type images, which I'll need to stamp next, I'm gonna stamp everything with one press of the machine, or, or one press of the stamp press rather. And I can stamp it one on top of another to make sure I get a really good crisp black stamped outline. So here's what my panel looks like so far, and I'm just gonna double check it. I'm gonna be using this A2 double stitched frame to add a decorative edge, especially for a card that's very simple and doesn't have a lot of layers. This is gonna add a nice decorative finishing element to that outside edge without losing any of the detail. Here's that additional seaweed image. I think it fits perfectly with the little rocks. It is also from under the sea and I will be stamping that right there. I really felt like I needed another image that the die cut was going to go through as far as color and to pop up part of the image. Starting with the skin first, I am laying down a little beige and then blending it out with flesh color. One thing that is different about the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers and that I like to do is instead of laying down the light color and then going in with your darker color and blending and going back with your light, I kind of skip that step. That's what you would do with Copics. You don't want to oversaturate the paper. So for me, I like to lay down my dark color. You'll see that with the mermaid tail here. And then I will take my lighter color and blend it out. You can always go back over it with the dark if you need to later on but I think it, you get really good results this way. And you wanna clean the tip of your lighter marker off on your scrap paper because it is going to pick up some of that color. These are water-based markers. For the greenery, I'm gonna use three different shades. All the colors I'm using are shown across the bottom of the screen, plus I've listed what colors I've used for what images on the card, so We've got pale green, light green, and yellow green. Just different color combinations. My under the water scene is going to be really fresh and light um, as opposed to maybe a darker color combination. 
and I'll just keep blending out with these three colors. There's not a ton of blending. These are really small images. In fact, for the little tiny leaves, I'm laying down the yellow green and then just kind of adding a little vein through the center with my um, light green marker. And the more you can add here, the better. It's gonna make the scene really fun. I didn't want it to be overly full so that the, I wanted the greeting to take center stage, but you want little pieces here and there. It just adds a lot of fun and detail to the image. For her bikini top, this is pink and sugared almond pink, one of my favorite color combinations, as well as the mermaid tail. These are all my favorite color combinations. Probably some of my most used Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. Just lots of amazing colors. For her hair, I wanted to do something non-traditional and really kind of wild, so she's gonna have blue hair. I think it's really fun with mermaids, mythical creatures anyway. It's just kind of a fun, um, something that you don't do a lot of, and it just really adds to the fun mermaid element here. This is blue and cobalt blue. I laid down my dark color first and then I'm blending out with the cobalt blue. And once this color blends out with the darker color, and I don't wanna over blend this. I'm doing a little bit of that feathering technique that you would do with Copic markers, but blending it a little, but you don't wanna blend out those hair strokes if that makes sense. And there's her hair. For the first fish, I'm using combinations of purple markers and yellows. Several different colors here to really make fun, bright fish. Once this little guy is all colored, I'm gonna add just a touch of color to the underwater bubbles with the Shadow Mauve. And I'll blend that out with a Wink of Stella Clear Glitter Brush Pen, which is also water-based. So if you wanna add glittery touches to any of your images, just be aware that because these are water-based markers, it's going to blend that out. So it's a great way also to kind of lighten areas if you're using a single color of marker and you wanna just blend out that color a little bit. The second fish is combinations of red, blended with pink to kind of lighten it, and then also some yellows. I only have this little stones left down there in the bottom right corner. For those, I am going to use Brick Beige and Warm Gray. Now, it kind of seems like everything is floating in outer space. And to help ground the image and really finish off the scene, I need to add some color to the background. I'm just gonna double check real quick. That looks good. I'm gonna grab an acrylic block to use as my palette. And I laid down a little bit of the beige marker and I'm picking it up with a water brush pen and adding some sand along the ocean floor. Very, very light. I don't wanna to go too terribly dark here. I'm gonna clean my block off and I'm gonna lay down some shadow mauve and then eventually some cobalt blue and do the same thing. I'm gonna pick up that color from my palette and then paint that on to the background and really kind of messy coloring, very light. You can build up the color if you need to. That's where that cobalt blue is gonna come into. I felt like the shadow mauve was just a tiny bit too light, but I want the background to be blended really nicely. And the way you can get that result is by coloring the color somewhere else, watering it down, and then painting it on. And you'll see as I get more and more color added to the background, this really helps give the illusion of an under the water scene and it finishes it off beautifully. You don't have to add tons of color you have to be a little careful around the previously colored images simply because they're going to pick up the color. So the hair kind of bled there a little bit. Because it was blue anyway, I was able to blend that out. But it, 
if you get your mark your water brush pin into any of the previously colored images they're going to bleed out one way to get around that is to color the background first especially since it's so light because you will paint over it with when you color in the images because they're going to be much darker I was living on the edge here and I went ahead and colored all my images first I guess so adding a little bit deeper blue especially around those fish around the mermaid she is the focal point here just to really make her pop and if the ink gets too watered down you can see me wiping it off my acrylic block several times I just wipe it dry add more color with my marker and then pick up that color again finish painting all of this now you want to make sure it's really good and dry before you do any die cutting I let mine air dry it really didn't take that long there wasn't a whole lot of water you can see my paper is not curling up a lot that's because I haven't added a ton of water to this you can also hit it with a heat tool if you want to I felt like I needed to darken up the ocean floor or the sand down here so I just added a line of the beige marker and then blended it out a little bit and that helps give a little more definition once this is dry I am going to die cut the word thanks this is the large thanks die from honeybee stamps right from that even though it takes out part of the greeting that's previously stamped and the images I know it looks kind of funny right now but stick with me it really does create a fun dimensional technique I absolutely love this it's hard to commit to die cutting something that you've worked so hard coloring but I found that I absolutely love this technique once you've done that I die cut the frame or the or the panel rather with that a2 double stitched frame and I'm going to keep them just like this I'm not actually going to uh, pop it up or anything but it adds a nice decorative element and I've also die cut four additional large thanks from some smooth white cardstock that I'll be stacking one on top of another I'm going to start the inlay by adding the frame to a white side fold card base I've added adhesive to that replacing it with the center panel and then I'm going to replace the die cut area with a white die cut thanks first just kind of inlaying that all of the little inside pieces then from the original background flat to the card you can use a pick a quick stick tool or a jewel picker or something like that to replace those that's going to make it much easier and then I stacked four of those white thank you or thanks rather one on top of another with a glue pin much like you're going to see here but it, you could see it's dimensional now I'll go ahead and put more adhesive on top and replace that with the colored die cut thanks the original one and you can see it gives that awesome raised design I'm going to put something heavy on top of that while the glue dries just to hold it flat and kind of compress those layers all together I like to use acrylic blocks for that I place some glossy accents in the fish bubbles and I'm going to finish my card with the finishing details which I'm using a white opaque pin to add detail to the mermaid tail just adding little dots and this really adds a lot of detail to her mermaid tail some little white highlights in the fins I love adding pin detail to the images when everything's finished this is kind of always one of my last things that I do I look at the image try to figure out if I think it needs anything additional now the card looks fantastic the way it is um, but there are some amazing sequins gems all kinds of awesome embellishments from honeybee stamps and I'm going to take some sequins and layer them this particular um, these sequins have some little gemstones in them and all kinds of different shapes and things and you'll see that in the final image here that I have layered different sequins all around and that really finishes off the card nicely thanks for joining me today for this card featuring new stamps from the Honey Bee July release the supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube here are a couple more videos featuring Honey Bee stamps you might be interested in Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.